at 47. 47, thank you. 547. Now, um, I, I don't have a copy of the agenda in front of me. The agenda just says review the survey. So, welcome everyone who is here. Uh, I think, um, were we, uh, how does this rate with your expectations of how many people would be here? Fewer? I didn't know. I, yeah. I, I expected the committee members, but I also know that you know, we, as we get closer and closer to the end of school, people get busier and busier. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. Well, so I don't know how well everybody else was informed, but I only got notice of it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was going to say the same thing. And, and to say we review it, I think, is a misnomer because we, I don't think any of us had a chance really no, to review it. No, the data just came out yesterday. Yeah, so, so to really review and talk about it, I don't think this should be the purpose of the screen because I don't think we've dealt, dealt into it enough. Somebody Plus, posted it on Facebook as an event, like Jill Gurry did, or somebody posted it yeah, to yeah, Facebook yeah, yesterday, and that's when I first got wind that there would be a meeting. Doing that too. So, can I just go to the you? Uh, we have, over the committee, we do. Don't we? We have three. Yeah, um, you have a committee of six, so you're at 50%. So technically, you don't have even have a quorum yet. Oh. But you can still, I mean, you can we still can, have a discussion. We can have a discussion. Just a discussion. Just discuss. discuss. right. you, you're not going to take any action. So, yeah. So, yeah. Your discussion. So, um, moving right along, introductions of attendees. Uh, Dave, do you want to start? <laughs> Dave Lawrence, Middlesex. Chrissy George, East Montpelier, parent and parent educator. Lauren Quelch, East Cavus, and parent. Edwin Bennett, East Montpelier, board member and parent. Christy Bay, parent, uh, Middlesex board member. Bill Trimble, superintendent of schools. Wendy Moore, parent, teacher. And Scott Thompson, parent and board member, View 32, from Cavus. Um, so everybody, Glad you're here, those of you who are here. And if anybody um, who wanted to be here and, and can't because they weren't able to make it um, due to lack of advance notice, I, I apologize for that. Um, recap of previous meetings. I think all of us have been at the um, previous meetings, yes? yes. Mm -hmm. Most of them. Does anybody have any questions about anything that happened before? that need to go over? Okay. There are um, minutes from the uh, public forum and meeting of whenever it was, April 23rd. Um, but we're not called upon to approve those minutes, just so that you know that they exist. And I assume... When, when you had your, if you had your quorum, then you if we had a quorum, we could approve them. Um, they're posted, Bill? Yeah. On the WCSU website, in case anybody wants to check them. And then, okay, the, uh, the one item is just to talk about the survey and what, uh, what the survey means to you and what you think it means for this effort. Uh, and how you might you know, pitch your advice to the group going forward. I Ruben. have one question, and it's for probably you, though. Um, the data is not disaggregated <coughs> between the elementary and U32, either parent groups or student groups. Mm -hmm. Is I, that possible? Yeah, they're all, I can cross-tab all of these reports by how people answer. The data, at least in my mind, is much less meaningful without that understanding of the yeah. source. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so I, I, can't, I can't infer much from this because I don't know who is talking. Yeah. You know, elementary schools, yeah. Which, which, all is just right, right, but which forty percent? Right. Yeah. So with the um, with the survey, with all those survey tools, whether it's Google or Survey Monkey, they can build a cross tab report that says everybody answered this way, and this this question okay. how's it how's it in the other. 
because I, I don't have, but the, the, frankly, the helpful information here is, is the comments, the graphs, and yeah. as an extra level meaning because I don't have that um, frame of reference. That's a good claim, yeah. Do you guys, um, obviously you guys know I'm not for the time yeah. change. How do you guys feel about the, what you're, I know it's not totally separated out, but what information do you guys have here? How do you guys feel about what you're seeing? Uh, Anybody? Who, who is it's, it's, it, it's close. Um, you know, the preference does seem to be to keep things the way they are um, right. by a slight amount. I right. understand, I think, in one graph, but, but within, uh, and it, it kind of surprised me uh, uh, in that respect. Uh, and it seemed like they, even the U32 students uh, would prefer to keep things pretty much the way, or at least it was split. Uh, but again, not an overwhelming uh, right. support for changing. It's, it's, I think, clear, at least from the graphs, I haven't read through the comments. And, so that's why I was asking before whether the comments match with graphs yeah. too, because the graphs surprised me when I when I first saw it. Uh, and and then we come up with the question of do we follow the science, uh, which is pretty overwhelming the other way, um, or or do we follow the you know what's, what's our role in, in terms of to do what our community wants, or follow the science what's what, what the science says is better for kids. So that's where I think the is an interesting question. So, the dilemma. Yeah, yeah. so as a parent, I almost feel um, if you don't represent the community, you're going to have a, a large I, I, response to that. And I almost say at this point, do you guys even continue as a committee to try to change it at this point? Or do you look at it down the road after perhaps Essex and see what theirs is like? Like, is there a reason still to have this committee going if the community is? For the most part, saying we're happy the way it is. Well, it's again, it's closely split. I wouldn't say. You know, I, know, I, I, feel I don't think it's overwhelmingly happy with it. You know, but it is a majority. I would, I would say, based on yeah. the graphs, there's a majority in favor of keeping the way it is. Correct. I yeah. agree with that. So would that, and maybe we'll look at the data more closely as far right. as schools, elementary school versus U32. Mm -hmm. But if the community is telling you, if, if when we analyze, perhaps we need to analyze the separateness. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see how you guys can go forward and say just because the science says that this is better, your community is saying we want to keep it the same as it is. How, like, how, how do you go, as elected school board members from your community, how do you go against the community is my question. It's a fair question, but I think the idea of using just in science and science is a very, very slippery slope. Well, there's, there, there were pros and cons in science also to not changing the start time. So you could get into the science and it could be this, whatever. Like, why is your opinion, because you found the scientific study, more important than what your community as a whole is telling you? Yeah. Well, well I'd say, not as a board member, that it's not necessarily saying that the opinion is more important, but that it's still worth investigating in part because of recognizing the inertia and the fact that these are really, really close. Like when you look at the how many people think this is just right, okay, it's still not even, it's a plurality, but it's still not even half as many people. Um, and I think at the second one? Here, yeah, that's second. They're saying it's just right. Right. And some are, the, the and some say no opinion. Which, and the next majority is saying it, it's too early. Right. And so which then, means that they would want it later. Um, so which graph? Uh, on the, on the, this, the student survey was just going oh, okay. to have to be on top. But I, I'm not going into detail on that particular graph, but uh, you know, I think overall it's not a question of you know, trying to cram this down people's throats, but still investigating, you know, um, because there are, of course, many times where a, a, a minority works for change that eventually is for the better. And I'm not necessarily saying this definitely is, it's better, right? but I understand still investigating it is, is worthwhile. Would anyone who hasn't spoken yet like to say something? I think that for me as a parent, in my situation, I need to know if we are going to continue with this discussion and know early enough um, if it is changed because I may be looking at having to pull my son out of the school and go somewhere else or come up with other 
you know, choices because, quite honestly, I, I don't think it's fair that I should have to quit my job after spending close to 13 years at home with him um, just so that I can get him to and from school. And I think a big part of this decision is going to affect the working people. Absolutely. And, you know, I think we need to think about that. Yeah. Um, if I might just sort of, uh, what Bill was saying earlier about going slow, mm -hmm. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, and taking maybe a pause to absorb a lot of what is in here. Um, I was, I just have to say, to those of you who participated in, the, in, in setting up this survey, I actually found this one of the most richly rewarding I don't know, sets of information that I've uh, seen in a long time about, about our schools, in particular about U32. And I just learned a ton. And there, part of what makes it difficult, and, and this is why I was telling you, Chris, that you know, although it aligns with the graphs, it, there's so much more dimensionality to it. Um, Everybody comes into it with sort of an assumption about what changing the time means. And, but that, what was great about that is that um, it uncovered all these different problems that people would have with the change, or problems that they have right now. Uh, and there are so many interesting insights that, um, that are sort of brought out, in, particularly in the, in the comments. Um, the comments are so all over the place, uh, but, but that's what makes them, I think, really valuable. However, it also makes them really hard to work with. <clears throat> um, I think, though, if the committee and, and, and sort of friends of the committee who are willing to, you know, to kind of um, keep us company on this and keep us from, you know, getting to um, maybe letting our, our own inclinations run away with us. If you're willing to um, kind of just look at all this and, and try, to, try to sort out what the problems are, because there's, there's stuff in here that um, even that might not even be pertinent to, to to the narrow issue of school start times, but which there um, are clearly important to to the survey respondents, and changing school start times, it's driven primarily by you know this idea is driven primarily by the science that uh, the public health um, professionals are are giving us, but. If we can work with it in order to solve problems, to solve real people's problems, real people's real problems, uh, at the same time, then that would be, I think, if it's going to work, then it has to work in that way. If, um, if it just creates problems for people, or you know, maybe solves one problem and cr creates five, then then it, there's a no point, yeah. So I, I want to say one of the things that we talked about the executive committee last night was the number of things that the boards want to do. And one of the things that I use as my benchmark is work that has been done by John Hattie. I brought his book with me. You can see how it's all dog-eared for me. It's not that dog-eared as it used to be. Um, but it, looking at what Everything, there's many things we can do in education that will improve student learning. There's very few things that, does, that, don't, that actually inhibit student learning. One of them is retention of students. It's one, there are maybe five or eight things that they found in international studies and national studies that, that will actually stop the learning process. Like holding them back a year? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. retention is holding them back. So that's a, it's, one, it's one of the worst things. But there's what's called an average growth rate or mean growth rate for students. So it's not looking at what advances learning, because most things we do will advance learning. It, it's what advances learning the most. 
Mm -hmm. And so for the leadership team at Washington Central, which is the principals and central office administrators, that's what we really look at for where we're going to sink our resources into. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a believer of the science. For me, it's I'm getting to a place, and so I said to the executive committee last night, I'm having to have to take priorities. So if I'm going to use that, I'm going to use that for my judgment as a superintendent is what the research of all the work we need to do. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was saying that. What I, the survey confirmed what I've been being told anecdotally, there's a lot of work inside the school system to go forward, and there's a lot of time to do that. But when I look at what the, other, the mission and the student learning outcomes that the board has given us, I've got to put that work up in front. And we don't have enough time to get that done. That was part of my report last night to the executive. Anymore. So I'm not saying to stop. What I'm telling you is I've got to, as, a, as your superintendent, I've got to start looking at priorities because of limited resources. And the limited resources, the amount of time to have all these discussions, frankly. Mm -hmm. Inside, inside, and that's the, that's the place I'm at. It doesn't mean not to do it. It's just that, that I'm having to make some tough choices. Mm -hmm. So you were about to speak. Back. Yeah, I just like to look at it from the perspective as a of a parent and a science teacher, and you know, it's 20 years of sleep research that has prompted the American Academy of Pediatrics. Like this is what's best for kids, for their health for their learning, for their future. I mean, they will go so far as to say, they sent a letter to every single school in the country. And, and if doctors, like pediatricians, if your pediatrician said, you know what, this is a vitamin your kid could take that could help your kid's future, or these are vaccines that are recommended to help your kids stay healthy. And one of the number one things we can do that we're not doing for our kids is to allow them to get more sleep. I mean, just looking at the statistics for high schools that shifted their start times, the number of accidents of teenagers from 16 to 18 went down by 25%. That's more than a seatbelt law. I mean, that alone, that's just them driving to school, not to mention their learning. For every half hour of learning, they saw an increase in grades by like a half a grade. They can document this. The number, if they're, they're getting more sleep, the number of kids that graduate, that go to college, and they can follow this. The research is unbelievable of what it does to the future of our kids. And I realize there's a lot of obstacles to overcome, but I just feel like throwing it away when I think there's so much at stake. It's the health of our children. It's the well-being of our children. And I know as parents, we want to do what's best for them. And I just, to just throw it all away, and I, I, I realize there's a lot of obstacles we have to get around, but it just makes me really sad. I know my daughter's coming here next year, and she's in sixth grade right now at Remy, and she's allowed to sleep until eight, and she sleeps. And I've already seen her circadian rhythm shift, and we're not into electronics. Electronics are done, if they have it, half an hour a day, done by seven. Her circadian rhythm has shifted. She's 12 now. She can't get to sleep. Like, we, they're in bed by 8.30. They have to be in bed by 8.30, because I'm, I'm just no asleep. And she just can't fall asleep. I'm seeing it change. But she sleeps until 8 in the morning. And I know next year, I'm going to have to wake her up by shaking her at 6. And I know what that does to the body and to the brain and how the brain functions and how the brain learns. There's so much research on that. That book that I brought in just will blow your mind if you read it. And, it, and the whole last chapter is what are we doing to our kids, to their futures? Um, I, just, I just don't want to throw that all away because it's really important. I mean, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends this for the well-being of our children. And I think that says a lot because we listen to doctors and we listen to scientists on other things like that you know, that, that are for our kids. And I don't want to forget that this is about the well-being of our kids. I just don't want to throw that away. It's really important. Yeah, don't worry. Um, I don't think anyone's... Yeah. I think... both of your comments... for me, there's a pretty clear line between them. Um, science is very clear and we don't have time to do this right now. And so, in my mind, and I tend to be the eternal optimist, um, you know, I, I'll finish this thought and I'll put it off to the other piece. 
in my mind, what what we've heard um, is we've heard that there's a fair amount of inertia. I think that's clear. Um, we know that it's not science-based inertia in terms of the, the simple, the oversimplified um, version of it. We, we have done what we actually set out to do with this survey, in my mind, which is to uncover all of the objections so that we can take, and this is where the opportunity in your two comments comes in, we can take the time to engage the community, figure out collaboratively um, whether these objections can be addressed and to what degree. And you know, part of the problem in Part of the sort of unspoken problem in the survey is, and I heard this from a handful of different folks who took the survey, and the theme kept coming up that everybody has jumped to a conclusion about what it is that we're talking about here. Some people think we are moving the start time by an hour later. Some people think we're moving it by a half an hour. Some people think we're only doing it at the elementary schools. And there's What's become clear to me is that there's a tremendous amount of misinformation out there. People have sort of jumped to the conclusions that they've jumped to about what it is that's going on without understanding that what we're really doing is what we did, which is gathering the information and the objections. So in that sort of, you know, one breadcrumb at a time methodology, we've, we've got the information now, and I think the, I think the reality is that we have to take the time to reflect on it. We can't do it fast, even if we wanted to. And I know that I think it would be invisible to do that. Um, so we we have we have been given the luxury of time. So whether can, we like it or not, I, I would caution you about using scientific research as that it's clear cut. Because I can tell you, the school nurses. That's have come, fair. The school nurses have come to me with several articles counteracting the science. Mm -hmm. so, so is it like the climate change thing, where there's like two yeah, percent versus ninety eight percent? I can't tell you the percent. I haven't gone out and done the research. I've read the book that you've read. I, I know the book. I know the research, that research. But I just want to caution <coughs> you. What is happening is exactly what Ruben said. People are taking things, whether it comes out of the Times Argus or out of our minutes, and saying. You guys have already made the decision, and so to be really clear about we're trying to gather information, the, 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 there have been, and this is why there's some concern amongst the staff, and I get it, and I actually support their concern in saying, now wait a minute, where's our point for our voice? And I said, we'll take the survey. And the survey gave you a voice, gave them a voice, which I think, at least when I read it, it's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, what I'm cautioning you on is, for me, it's the amount, as your superintendent, thinking about the goals and objectives the boards have set us to, to say, okay, that's the goals and the objectives. Um, I, like, and I'm sorry, I sound like a broken record, but it, it's going back to that of, these are the resources we have. If you'd like to give us more resources so we can move more things, we could do that. But I need direction from the board to say, we want a, you know, the priority discussion. Anyone who's a board member around this table has heard me say that many times about we've got to kind of pick about what our what our priorities are. In terms of what, what do you mean by priority? Because we only have we have a lot. So to 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 do this work, we would need lots of engagement time with the staff. So do I put all? Oh, it's because you don't have time. Time is right. Time, right. time uh, to work with the staff to have the discussions, to have the to have to look at the information, to gather people together. So. That resource to do, and then who's going to design all that? Well, it's great to have a committee, and all of you know that I, I mean this as no disrespect, but you're volunteer board members, so usually that means there's support from someone in administration to make sure it actually comes off. And I'm not saying like a principal or an assist or myself, it's usually sometimes an administrative assistant to put everything together, and that usually gets bigger than what we thought of. So I want to just be a, the realist in the room to say we can do that. But we can only do so much. And so I have a direction from the board if you say, this is a priority over some of the other things we've talked about doing, or we are doing. I need to know that. 
Um, and you know, we, we're right now building our whole professional development calendar for next year. So, um, and the principals have that pretty well built out, but to say, you know, they can take, you know, okay, well, we're gonna move this to do, do something else. And so those are the things that, those are the types of conversations that need to happen. I mean, Chrissy and I have talked about this because we're hearing it clearly from the staff here mm -hmm. of like, don't be going forward. I have two emails that I got today about why didn't you get us there tonight and give us time to do that? And I said back to them, uh, by the way, the subcommittee works on open meeting law, so I can't discuss with them online a topic until they're all in a meeting together <laughs> to have the discussion about having a meeting with you. It's crazy, but it's open meeting law. Mm -hmm. It's the way it works in Vermont. But if it's an open meeting, couldn't they have come anyway? They could, yeah. they could, they could, but it's, you know, it's that piece of, it, you know, we've got we to gotta build stuff together. It's, it's just, it's one of the unfortunate, or fortunate, however you look at it, but it's the way open meeting law works in Vermont. Yeah. So are you saying you stay with us till next year? No, what, no. I'm trying to understand. No, what I'm saying is, well, I'm saying this group should look at this information and say, what does it say? The subcommittee that's here from the board has to say to the SU board, the SU board's talking about goals next Wednesday. My caution in that was don't be putting a lot of extra goals on us because you can, but just realize the more things you put on, the less depth that gets done with anything. So what I'm saying is if you, depending on where you want to go as a subcommittee, I'm going to be looking to the SU board to say, what are our goals and what are we doing? And what are the priorities in doing it? It's not saying, it's saying that we're going to have, we have work with student learning, we have work with governance, and we have work with community engagement are three of the goals on there. And we actually have a fourth goal probably coming, which is around inclusion and diversity. That is even on the list right now, along with meeting all the student learning outcomes piece and the work we've been doing for proficiencies. So that's my role to say, I get it. I get we want to do all this. These are the resources. How do you want to use them? Mm -hmm. Should we pause for station identification at this point and just brief Karen in on what, um, sort of what happened while she was um, taking care of all oh God's creatures, great and small? <laughs> And please jump in if uh, if I if I get anything wrong. Um, okay, the the substance is basically the survey, of course. I think some of those of us who uh, were sort of more inclined to pursue the start time change were um, I think it's fair to say surprised by the results, the, um, the hesitation in the survey results. Um, those who are not in favor of this, I think we're less surprised by it. Uh, and Bill has also mentioned that a group of teachers, 20, did you say? It's about that. It's about 20, are also um, uh, hesitant about the, this idea and about um, proceeding with a, a start time change and want to be part of any discussion. Uh, my own, uh, I was, in, despite my personal surprise, I found the, um, the comments extremely rich and interesting and, I, and a validation of our approach, I think, which nobody seems so far to really believe that we, act, as Ruben was saying, that we actually are collecting information before having made the decision. We're not trying to you know, railroad anything down anybody's throats. Um, but we're trying to find out where, where people stand in order to be able to, to make a decision and to, or to, put, to see what we can put together first and if that flies or if it doesn't. Um, so anyway, is that, is that a fair assessment? Bill, I think, um, quite rightly, has talked about the advantages of, of maybe taking stock, going slow for the time being. Bill is also underscoring the, the, you know, the priority crunch that um, both 
the leadership team and the boards are facing uh, with everything else that's on their plates. Um, what I, I mean, I would be prepared to do is to try to um, just sift through these, you know, basically spend the summer um, trying to trying to get what there is to be gotten out of this um, out of the survey information, and with the idea that we can't just it's not just a matter of changing start times. Period. There would have to be. It just. There's so much else that that feeds into it, from extracurriculars to childcare to transportation to, you know, parents' work schedules to, you know, um, students' own habits of of electronics use and homework is a big one. And, you know, um, it it just goes on and on. So. I think we definitely need to to process this before we do um, before we do anything else or, or you know proceed with anything. Okay. So I, I've got the letter. If I can read that, sure. That's that for it. So, uh, and this may be a little bit different than the actual one you received, Karen, because uh, it's the a version earlier. But it is the one I can find quickly. Um, it's an open letter to the, to the school board. We are extremely concerned about how quickly the school start time conversation in Washington Central is moving. We are concerned about the pressure to develop and move forward on a plan without fully considering the nuances of the situation and gathering information from all stakeholders. We believe any legitimate process will intentionally seek answers to questions about equity and impact before deciding on a solution. We believe any legitimate process must make sincere, concentrated efforts to reach out to a variety of stakeholders. We believe a successful process will bring the whole community along. Specifically, we'd like answers to the following questions before any decisions are finalized. What are the specific proposals for new start times and their costs and benefits? Will students who participate in co-curricular activities miss more academic time with a later start time? What will the impact be on students who need to have an after school job? How will co-curriculars change, and what impact will the potential changes have? Will there still be a late bus enabling students to participate in co-curricular activities? If co-curriculars would occur before school, will a significant number of students need to arrive at school earlier than they currently do? How many families rely on older children to care for younger siblings? How do specific plans impact and address the needs for these families? What will the impact be on early dismissal days and teacher professional development time? How will the committee ensure the statistically valid validity of any survey, and how will the information be shared? We believe this process should be slowed down to better involve more stakeholders and more thorough, thoughtful reflection. I think that was pretty much along the lines of what was there. And these were a lot of concerns that we brought up at the, last, the April 23rd meeting. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't disagree with any of that. I think yeah. it's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. I, I think it's very reasonable. I think it's also, um, points to the fact that, you know, any change, per, the whole misinformation thing, the task and the mission or the, the objective for the committee was to do what we're doing and do the best we can to come gather data, gather information, and come back and submit a report to the full board. To submit a report, that's not implement a change. So. A letter like that assumes that there's a change coming down the way, and so that that is unfortunate. I was not surprised by any of this, the results, and I actually also see it as an opportunity because when you look at it, what I see is you have half the community picked their elementary school should be at eight or eight thirty when currently they start at nine. So half of them picked a different time. So it's really pretty much half and half in a lot of ways with what people, when you put together too late, too early, or just right, they're almost equal. Half the people said too late, too early, half said just right. Like when you really look at it, what I see is a community where half the people are in close, are in favor of change, and half are like, this is fine, it's working just as it is. And so you have the opportunity to say, well, then, what are the concerns? And the concerns are very well documented, I think, in the comments and in the rankings. And that's where 
yeah, we have to decide. You almost need feasibility study type things. People need to see the people who, if nothing's going to change, fine. If there's going to be a proposed change for a couple of years from now, people need to see the nuts and bolts. They need a model. They need a model of the buses could do A or B. Um, after school activities for sports could have this or this change to make it work. Um, they need models. They need to see. And that's because when you read the comments, it all boils down to how does it impact me and my family when you take something global like this. Um, and, and you have people, you know, I, I think about what it impacts for me and my kids and my family more than I think about how it impacts yours or yours or my neighbors. Yeah, I don't care about you guys as much as me. I mean, it's just true. And so it's not that I don't care, but that yeah, I'm no. going to want to know and have my solution <laughs> fixed if I'm going to be comfortable with things staying the same way it is. I will say, anything in my life is built around the times my kids start and stop school already. And that was arbitrarily put on me when I signed them up for school. So if it was changed, I'd have to arrange my life around it. And uh, it either suck or be good or bad. But, um, or if you change districts. Yes. Like, yes. And I will say, I, I, I was contacted by a Montpelier High School student who's trying to lead the charge for getting Montpelier to shift their start, start time to later as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> Risk of talking too much. Go for it, Just a, a risk that I take my <laughs> No problem. Um, when we don't have specifics, then it's totally natural to go to the worst case scenario. Like, we haven't given specifics. So, in the absence of specifics, I'm going to go level. Well, this could be pretty bad. And and it could. We talked about trying to get specific time starts in, but the rest of the right. committee didn't want to do that. Right, we're not there yet, right? Because we don't know, I, again, this, this goes back to, to really being dialed in and methodical about how we do this. And discipline, I think, is probably the, the right word to, to use, where we've gathered the information that I think we should all signs point to slow down, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, it, Be careful of that because Bill mentioned the nurses finding other documentation, saying that that's not true. So no, no, all signs. Oh, they said signs. I'm sorry. I heard signs. I heard signs. Sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Um, I'm right here. So I, I think I think we need to slow down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of data in here. Mm -hmm. right. I, I think we can easily take the summer and parse it out and reflect on it and have a think and see, you know, what does this mean? Um, and in the fall, if we come back together, we can decide what we do from there. Um, and is there work over the summer? I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, we're, we, I think, by necessity, by resources, by community stasis by all of the other things that are at play, trying to get something done for the next school year would be suicidal. It would just immediately tank. That was already right. off the table anyways. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. for next year, it was for the right. year, after. Oh, year after. So, so I, I think the real, I, I think for me, the takeaway from this data is that we need to be very mindful and very methodical about how we proceed, right? We want to we want to digest this data that we've gotten back. Um, we want to we want the time to investigate the counter science, right? If we <laughs> investigate the counter science and it comes back as garbage, then we've investigated it and we can say it's garbage. If we investigate it and it's valid and there's a fair preponderance of it, then that. I, Right, that's a different conclusion that you can draw. Um, but all of those explorations take time. And As does the time also gives us um, some ability to find out what Essex's experience with it will be. And in the meantime, we'll have somebody piloting this somewhere else. Right. Yeah. 
What are their start times moving to? They're moving up to 30. Aren't they, don't they start currently at 7.30? They do. That's, so that's, that's a, earlier than us. Yeah, and I that, think they're changing to 8. Yeah, I'd have to check. So I, talked to Beth Cobb, I talked to Beth Cobb last yeah. week, and she said they're not moving their high school. They're moving hmm. the K-8s. They're moving them later? Mm -hmm. the um, I have to get the exact, I just don't okay. yeah. so I talked to her, I talked, you know, it was just last Thursday when I talked to her when we were at a conference because we said, hey, we're both going to be there. Let's talk. That's, they're moving their times, but they're not moving their high school. And just no. if I, the two. I thought that was high school. No. Yeah, yeah, that's, high school is off. For huh. So um, the two quick comments I wanted to add earlier for one was as um, Bill had pointed out that you know we have a lot of information here about what people's objections are and and I of course the point is not to take the objections and say this is why you're wrong <laughs> but to find out okay well how can we solve this particular problem right and so that is also takes some time to think about them. and then the other about the climate change thing one of the problems with the science even though I'm in favor of the science is it's epidemiology and epidemiology has a giant Swiss cheese holes so you can throw so much stop through that there there are a lot of claims that are made that I think are a lot harder to support solely because of the way that the science is done versus tracking you know straight up statistics like average change of the earth climate climate science has, has a better scientific foundation for it than the epidemiology around this does so I think we find legitimate complaints and we have to look at it on the preponderance of it so. I just, it just surprised me that the American mm -hmm. Academy of Pediatrics would put something out to every school in the country if it's well, not sound science. Well, yeah, uh, and I'm surprised by some things like that as well, and I won't go down uh, rat holes on that, but then there have occasionally been professional or, uh, bodies that have recommended something things that changed. turn out to mm -hmm. not be. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, went to, uh, I went to a presentation on the science, and I should remember the name, I should remember the last name, uh, down in... Um, Massachusetts on May 11th, and Karen was going to be able to jump in, but it was postponed. Unfortunately, couldn't make it. And uh, you know, you, you can put besides American Pediat Pediatrics Association, you can put a long list of medical and international that have a stamp on the science of delaying start time. Um, but the clear message was it it wasn't about the science. It's the moving. It's the education and getting people. I'll tell you, the city of Newport jumped last year. The board on June, a, lot, a year ago from this June, so that was in 2017, United right away said we're changing all the start times. Is that Rhode Island? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Okay, and they re, and they, re, they use their, they use the public transit to move the, the students around within the city of Newport, Rhode Island. They had so much pushback that this year, they're going right back, and they start their high school at seven fifteen. How shocking that they had pushback when they made the decision by fiat. <laughs> so, what that told me, and I talked to the superintendent, because she happened to be at this conference, at this, and 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 the school start school later folks are in there doing the research on what's happening and a case study of it, and she said it was exactly what you said, David. It's because the board just decided to do it on a whim, and there wasn't the pre work and. Time. So that's why I come back to what I said earlier. I don't. I'm not saying it as a diversion tactic. I'm saying it's a priority. So, so what do we want as a SU board? Are our priorities, and where are we going to put our resources behind it? Because if this is something we're going to do, I'm just saying it's going to take a lot of effort. It doesn't mean it won't happen and it can't happen. I just want to be realistic about the amount of resources that we need to throw in it. And as you asked me, it's really about time to have those discussions. Yeah. But we don't have unlimited time with staff, unfortunately. Um, and, and they shouldn't because they work hard as it is. So we should be able to say, you know, when we have those two hour professional or hour and a half professional every Wednesday, we're pretty, I know the leadership team and I are pretty, um, we're very deliberate with how we use that. It's probably the best word. Were there any results from the um, change in stuff on the uniform? Were there any measurable changes? They couldn't be, they, 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 nothing they really, visit. nothing really. They just, they were dealing so much with the angst the and, and the problem. turmoil, they couldn't even get to that. Yeah, that goes back to listening to the community. Mm -hmm. If you make, the board makes the right. decision based yeah. on what the committee feels is mm -hmm. accurate, you're going to get that backlash. Amen. And there's a little bit of that tension between, like, if, if, as Wendy says, you know, this is the biggest bang 
then that's one thing to look at, but it's in tension with, it, it might also be the highest cost in, not, in terms of social capital, in terms of not just financial resources, but of all the things that go into what make our schools happy. And so if you're prioritizing other things that are getting incremental changes, but for less angst and... So, so this will go to my theory of government. This is a place where the board needs to weigh in, because the board's gotta take that, that position. Decide where the representative of the community to say, Okay, so Bill, you're telling us this is the resources. You've given, you know, we as a board have said these are the priorities. What, how do we want to, where do we want to put our efforts? So this kind of brings us to the question, what do we tell the supervisor union board at the next meeting when we're supposed to report? It, it, that's June 6th. Six. Six. <laughs> Wonderful. That was actually my question for you, and I'm really sorry about Tyler had surgery last weekend. I got to get into oh, yeah. the yeah. So, um, but my question is, what is next week's meeting? Is it just telling them what you've done so far, or what is going to happen at next week's meeting? I think it's um, it's a report of what's been done so far, what's been gathered, and I think the committee has to decide what we would recommend, um, which would be would we recommend the committee not be we can either recommend the committee be sunset and the board decide based on what we give them. We could decide that we want the committee to um, have another certain period of time to do more work and analyze this more, delay our report, basically just give an interim report of what's been done so far um, before we come up with clear recommendations and say back in, in the fall, come forward with a report that recommends you know, basically to me, it, it's probably recommending that the board decide if pursuing potentially changing the school times in our district is a priority. That's the first decision. And if they say, yes, it is, then what we think needs to happen if they decide it's a priority. And we think that there needs to be, um, to me, there needs to be resources allocated to where, you know, it is volunteers you know, that have been on this committee and volunteer parents who've come to the forums and participated and people who did the surveys, but have people who can do a feasibility model of bus cost. Um, after, I know that they can pull reports and they can find out how, you know, basically from the schools pretty easily who has younger siblings and then reach out to directly to those people and say, how much do you rely on the older kid for daycare? Which kids have jobs? How much it would have changed it. And so get those answers to the questions that you see in here. Same thing with sports. My son's playing middle school sports and I think it's absolutely ridiculous for that he could be on a bus for two and a half hours to go to a sporting event. I don't care how small our state is. It's not worth a seventh grader going that far and then two and a half hours back. I mean, no, I mean, I think it's looking into should we have our kids go that far for a sporting event? Where is that going to get in 20 years? What benefit is he going to get from that? Not much. His That's a different so um, Sorry, are you going to present this data as it is, or are you going to put a report together? To me, to oh, this would be this would be so you in the this. report. The so Yes. So this. are you going to share the report before you give it? Because I'm oh. concerned that it's going to be biased in one direction or the other. So I, I, don't think, I think we're reporting, I don't think we're presenting a report with right. conclusions because, as we, I mean, have you read through all this stuff yet? No. Um, I don't think anybody has really read through it to right. be able to parse it out. And it would be ridiculous, you know, it would be a disservice, I think, to our charge to say, based on our survey and our analysis that no one did, um, to this report that right. this is, you know, we're not making recommendations, um, you know, because I don't think we really have from this so then, information. You I could absolutely the say the responses are mixed. That's a true statement. Are you going to go to the board then and say, uh, propose that you have more time on this committee? Is that kind of what you're all leaning towards? If they see that, if they, they want to kill it, they can kill it. Okay. But uh, I, I know that I would be in favor of slowing down, trying to digest this, and then um, having an interim report saying, this is what we've done, uh, and just recommending keeping, keeping the subcommittee alive uh, in order to just see if we can make something of this, uh, but 
know, proceeding with all um, due care and deliberation. I mean, one thing, one thing that I, I said to the association and read you that letter about this, and I said, and Karen knows this because you and I talked about that, you need to be discussed tonight, was that there would be a chance when the staff can be invited with three or four weeks of notice of, you know, that's not what tonight's for, but hopefully tonight we might be able to say, okay, well, that's part of the information gathering we need to do. Mm -hmm. Well, and for me, it's not the biggest thing I've gotten out of having what this is the fifth or sixth evening of my life that I've dedicated to us mm -hmm. trying to get people to come to um, mm -hmm. is we got to go to them. Yeah. No, we got to go to them. We got to go to uh, each of the small school board meetings. And when you have all the U32 school administrators and teachers together, maybe four days before school starts for a huge meeting, we need to be there and having the discussion where they already are because they live elsewhere and come in here later. I mean, if we really want it to be engagement with people, you're going to have to go to them. them. I think before we even consider doing that, though, we have a lot of communication to do with the community. Because at the end of the day, as you rightly pointed out, we are representatives of the community. I, those of us who are two more members are, and so democracy is slow and it's messy. Right. And in order to have a chance at having the outcome that my own personal, this is my own personal bias, and I'll be square about that all the way through, um, in order to have that have a chance of being successful, there's, and we knew this at the beginning, there's a big educational component, and there are legitimate concerns that have to be addressed. And so, I, in my mind, the report out to the full board is, is that there are a lot of very legitimate concerns. There's a lot of inertia. I guess my lack of inertia. I guess my concern to the school board members that are here that you cannot be biased. You have to be openly object. You have to be objective. I mean, you have to be able to look at everything from both sides. You can't take what you want and put it out as what the whole community wants. You've got to factor in all those facts from everybody. And if it's just your opinion and your bias that you know that you feel this is right and you want to push forward to that, mm -hmm. then you're doing a misjustice as a school board member. I agree, and bias is probably a poor choice. Right. So, I mean, because, um, to your point of taking in all the information, you're weighing and balancing the different sources of information and the quality of the information as well. Right. I mean, you kind of get back to that climate science uh, debate where um, someone can say anything that, oh, it's not real. Um, which is scientifically dis disproved. Um, but you, you're weighing those different factors and, and you're right about getting all the information. Right. So I think, or I would hope that our next step um, in report to the board is that we need more time because there's a lot more information out there to consider. Um, and also there's probably responses in this survey where some tweaks can probably be made um, that would satisfy a constituent group. Um, maybe not the high school, maybe not changing the high school Correct. time, changing another time. But then you get into the cost factor of the whole buses. And so it's mm -hmm. kind of balancing all of that stuff, right. that information. Yeah. So, right, it, I agree with you. Yeah. So is, is what you're going to go to the board with going to be in some kind of meeting minutes from here? And would we see that before next week's meeting? I guess you need oral report. Um, yeah. I think yeah. the board will have copies of the sur uh, survey materials. Uh, but I anticipate it will be an oral report to the board as a whole, and you're certainly welcome to come. I was going to ask you what time. Uh, it's at like, yeah. uh, 6 o'clock. It's at 6, but it's really at the end. It's going to be, I'm just going to warn you. It's a, and this is not to, to not have you go there, but the board has, they have about four or five really heavy topics that we know of. We also have an Act 46 report that's probably coming out tomorrow on what the, where the state's going with Act 46. So we're actually putting on the agenda that the SU board meeting might be lengthened because people may want to talk about that. What do you think, Scott? Do we? <laughs> There's a chance. There's a chance. There's a chance. Why can't the board just receive this information and come to their own conclusion? 
Why do you need to give an oral report? Well, they, because they, they've asked for this group to give a report, okay. and that's what we, how we do it. And, and I, just, I just hope it's, a, it's yeah, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. Uh, that's all. Awesome. That's my purpose. There's not gonna be changes to the start time. There's no vote. I can assure you, there's not be any vote. Okay. Like, well, I don't did I miss? Understand you that essentially, just what you want to know also was what the sense of the you know, not necessarily what the reason for the vote. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank we're going to try to understand and what we've got before we do anything else. And every bit of everything all along is uh, they have public because record. it's public record. Mm -hmm. It's on the website. Anybody, anybody on the board um, has been supplied and has the opportunity to read all of it. Um, Orca reports, <laughs> and you can fast forward. But um, I, I will be standing up because I'll be called on by Matthew DeGroote and giving what I consider um, a summary of what's been done, as factual as I can do it, and a cha you know, challenge them all to please read through it because I love their opinions. And then our report is that you know, the subcommittee needs to decide amongst itself whether they think they should continue to exist and keep working or whether they would like to be sunset. And it's up to the board to, right, to, to go one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. And so you can watch it. Right. And if you find that anything is misrepresented there, yeah. please reach out to every single board member and say, I think this is wrong. Karen Bradley got this wrong. She right. said it this way, and that is not how it was. Please well, do that. Yeah. We'll speak up at the meeting. I mean, or if you're there, yeah. 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 Right. Right. Say, I, you know. So that's, that's what I'm trying to say. See, my vote right now would be to be, you guys are done. Like, the, this is done. Like, there's no time for this. There's other priorities. Maybe revisit it in another year is that or whatever. But that, that would be my vote right now. Is that your uh, I, well, I, I'm not opposed to the elementary school starting yeah. at a different time. I don't think it's necessary to do the U32. Yeah. But, and, and, and I've talked to a lot of people in the building, other parents. Mm -hmm. I've had two daughters already graduate here, both very successful. No, Didn't have an issue been, getting up early. Three. Played sports. Yeah. All the way, you know, Division One athletes, high achievers. Yeah. So uh, you, you, you're right. It does uh, like personally what works personally for you, and that is hard to so, do. So and we I will. Chris, we we talk to people who t who we often. I've done the same with the exact opposite conversation. Right. So we it's I, to talk to people who agree with us, us yeah. too. So right. I feel like there's all these people, and I'm looking for them in here, and I'm finding them because. Right, because we want to. So yeah. I, I do so, understand. So can I just bring in a piece from research? From I mean, my quant qualitative methods, part of my doctoral program. Right? So whether you like it or not, everyone's biased. I agree. Mm -hmm. Everyone is biased. There is no way that you can fully check your biases. So if anyone says you can make a survey that's completely bias-free or objective, you can't. So what the best research does as, as a researcher, when you start to write your research, the first thing you do is declare your point of view and your biases. And so people, as they read the rest of it, say, oh, I understand the bent that this is coming for. And I, as the reader, can decide whether it's valid or not. So I really appreciate you trying, Chris saying, hey, you guys have got to be objective about this. But I also want to say that that's almost a false Okay. Facade, it, it can't be done. That's, that's part of the people. On yeah. the and, 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 and for me, that's that's the part of that's that's actually from being a former engineer and coming into the human sciences from the physical sciences. I like the human sciences so much more because there's so many more variables. Right. And that's you like that? I, no, well, I like engineering. <laughs> I, <like that. laughs> I understand some people call me crazy, but I like I like that part. That's what I, to me that makes it a lot more interesting. It's a lot harder. It's extremely a lot harder because you, you don't know all the variables. Right. But and you can't make everybody happy. Right. Well, and it's also it. exactly why I put out on front porch form when I put the notes out yeah. saying, look. The people that have been coming to the early meetings have all been in favor of it, and I know not everybody's in favor of it, so you've got to make your price. Right. And I think that's part of what we heard, where it's like, hey, there's a mixture out there, and we've got to find out what that means. Yeah. And that, that to me, is 
And I, I'm trying, and, and Chrissy, hopefully I, it's shot. I want to represent the staff, too, that right. there's a piece here that's saying, hey, slow down, get us in the conversation. Yeah, I think there are questions that they have are valid. I think yeah, there are questions sure. that we brought up that we haven't been able to answer. Right. Or if they were answered, they weren't um, thoroughly thought out. Um, so I think that, yeah, it, maybe there's more research into it. Yeah. There are a lot of valid questions. Right. I think, yeah. All the way around. I should note we're hitting the hour mark. Uh, is there anything more that needs to be said before? Do you want to try to schedule a time, a night time? I can't give you a beginning of school daytime right now, Karen, mm -hmm. uh, because we have that basically all scheduled right now for start of school. Um, do you want to try to schedule something that's an open forum for the association teacher group that would like to come? And would you like to try to do that before the end of June? Or would you like to try to do that in the beginning of school? And I'd be willing to, you know, Don't. communicate that back. Should we wait to see what the board decides before they, they come? And, that, and, that is, and that, that's a, that's a possible too. Right. It, so I, I'm just asking the question because I, like I tell you, I got a couple emails today, and I think they thought this was their meeting. I'm like, no, this is not your right. meeting. I've got. It's back. And so I, you're just trying I, to be proactive in case it gets voted to. I'm trying to be proactive. I can can be hands. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. but I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is, frankly, I'm trying to say to folks, I, I promise I gauge them, which was like, you will have your voice, but you, it's part of the piece of not understanding. Because of open meeting law, I couldn't bring this group together. Tonight. Mm -hmm. to, or I couldn't do it through email. Hey, what would you like to do? And Because I, I knew I had to explain the letter and all that, and without, then I get into a discussion, mm -hmm. and if I do that online, I just violated open meeting law. Can I make a suggestion? So, can I suggest that as a committee, when we commit to that group, that when it is appropriate, there will be a space. But I don't know what outcome we're looking for by asking for their time at this point. But, uh, going back to this, I mean, we've got enough to chew on with this. I think asking for a group of staff to come and talk about what um, I, I don't see uh, I, the value of it is that somebody may may feel heard because they had an opportunity to come and talk. But I think the danger is that because we have nothing to talk about, we'll end up actually boiling things up more. And we don't have the but, answers to many of their questions. Well, we, we may not, but at least we'll hear their concerns, and I think the stakeholder group, and the teachers are a stakeholder group, that's for sure, uh, and that's who we should be reaching out to. I mean, we did it with the community right. and survey, uh, and so I would, I would say certainly offer the opportunity, because when appropriate means, when, when, when is it appropriate that have to have to further down the path? Yeah, yeah. no, just when appropriate, like when we have a recommendation. I, I, don't, I don't know. That would be the book, but that's that's what we have a recommendation, and they say, "Yeah, we're going to talk to you." What difference does it make? No, no, you're at right. that point. So that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yes, I think. Okay. I think I'd be flexible with either one. I I would really appreciate the opportunity of having like a discussion format. Um, okay. yeah. Could um, we also, by the way, get a copy not in PDF form? PDF. I have. I can go on a long and extended rant about the applicability of PDF for sharing documents. Um, one of the key ones being is it's hard to use native like searching tools and yeah. so on on it. And so like, there's 14 pages of comments here, and I'm trying to find one right now that I read, and I can't find it even. Right. But of course, it's paper format. Right? Oh. But um, my favorite one. <laughs> Well, I had one. I, there was one about some poor kid who's riding the bus, and I wanted to just see if it was a one and a half hours each way, which is the way I thought I read it, which is like, is there something we can do to optimize this poor kid's bus route? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but in any event, if we could have uh, the actual text comments in a more portable format, that would be great. Yeah. Any particular one you like? Uh, plain text is what I like the most. HTML works. Um, so. Okay. You know, sir, um, rich, rich text, maybe. Rich yeah, text yeah, yeah. So that's an open format. Right. Yep. And you can get a little bit of format. All right. What was your favorite one? Mine was about the menstrual utensils available. Oh, I 32. <laughs> Did you see? 
I was like, well, I'm glad they wrote that. I'm on the school board. I have to right. bring that. Well, I think Governor Scott may have um, may have done response number one on the parent companies for the time survey. Eliminate teachers from our taxes. I think we need to do a little more slicing and dicing on 101 yeah, comments too, yeah. just as far as even just a simple first approximation of this one's in favor of the change, this one's not. Yeah. Did you say rich tax? He did rich. Okay. Yeah, rich taxes. Okay. It's a simple market. It's okay. something that word can say to okay. everything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the. I started to print. I ended up just printing the comments because I didn't want to use all the oh. color ink on my printer. <laughs> Yeah. So are, are we good? You good? You got what you need? Yes. For next Wednesday? Yes. Chrissy, are you happy? I'm fine. Okay. I don't good. Happy about uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be careful with your words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, should be. Great. Um, in that case, we're adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Thank you.